Hi, welcome back to Once Upon a Game. I'm Kevin Kitchens, and as you know, I used to be on uh, Board Game Gulag, as I affectionately call it now, uh, and had a blog there. And part of the uh, one of the um, guilds on uh, on BGG is the uh, One Player Guild, which is for you know folks who like to play solitaire games. But for the most part, it covers um, uh, solo gaming. And one of the initiatives that's been on there for many, many years is the Solitaire Games on Your Table uh, Geek List. Uh, so, so a user hosts this you know, every month, and users will join and uh, 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 post their, their solo plays on the, on the Geek List. Now everybody posts in different ways, but ideally um, it's one post per game, or per play, every time you play it in the month. And then, uh, people can read, follow along. Anyway, here's a game that uh, I, I didn't know about. Here's a game I didn't even play solo. Here's a game that's you know generally multiplayer, and you're just playing true solo uh, against yourself, playing both sides. For many years, the uh, SGOYT, as it's as it's known, has been has been around. And uh, about six years ago, uh, I put together the uh, SGOYT aggregator, which compiled those geek lists, you know, read all the data and kept it in a central location where people could say, hey, I want to find out what people are saying about this game. Is it good for solo? Same by I've been playing it solo. Do people hate it for solo? Do they love it for solo? So on and so forth. And so uh, basically just, again, makes it a lot easier to find that data. So when I had my blog over on, uh, on the Gulag, I, uh, for a while, would track the top 10 games each month. Um, uh, that, that people were playing. It's, it's, it's merely a snapshot, just like uh, Casey Kasem used to track the top 10 or the top 40 uh, as compiled by Billboard. Uh, this was just a snapshot of what gamers were reporting who played solo on the SGOYT. And then it would take, you know, we just, you know, we'd talk about it and just, you know, see, see, you know, compare stats. Now that I've been off uh, BGG for Unfortunately, a couple of years now, due to reasons that are pretty well known, if not, you can go to onceuponagame.com and it's the first post there. You'll you'll find out what really happened, and uh, uh, hopefully one day, you know, maybe Elon Musk will buy uh, BGG and free it like he's going to do with Twitter. That would be awesome. Um, but until the, you know, until then, I'm you know just making the best I can in the uh, in the gaming space on other sites and. Um, that's neither here nor there. What is here or there is that you know the aggregator keeps churning along and people keep posting and the, you know and then uh, I thought I would uh, start reporting again like I used to, but instead of in the blog I would do it on on YouTube and people can you know if you want to check them out and see what these games have to offer um, that would be really cool. So starting now uh, we will do the. Uh, I'll do the September 2022. The, the Geek List usually ends, you know, the new one starts the next month, you know. So right now they're posting in October, and my process keeps track because some people will post after, into October, they'll, get, they'll come back and, and log all their plays you know, for September late. Um, you know, it's, there's no hard and fast rules. Some people will post their September, their late September plays in October. Some people will prematurely post in October when they played in September. So it's not scientific, this is not anything special, but it will give you an idea of what solo gamers are playing um, uh, each month. So, and then, you know, we can do kind of do comparisons with previous months. So uh, for September, the top 10 was compiled of 14 games actually, because we had a lot of ties. So the one thing this list uh, does for compiling these stats is we don't go by actual plays, that's tracked separately. A unique entry has always consistently been a single game by a single user in a single month. So one user may play a game, you know, 15 times, but it only counts as one play for the month. Now the actual plays are still logged and everybody can go read their different posts and things like that about them. But what we didn't want to do is have people, you know, uh, trying to stack the deck by, you know, making sure their favorite game was always at the top by posting several several plays and counting it several times because they had it out on the table and they were playing it 
you know, we're basically playing it this month. So, um, but uh, the uh, URL for the SGOYT is at sgoyt.peidev.com, and there'll be a link on the screen and uh, a clickable link in the show notes for this. Um, so we will get on with the countdown. So officially this is tied for seventh uh, uh, with four unique uh, plays for the month. This is Wingspan. This is from uh, Stonemeyer Games, I believe. Um, it's a pretty fun game. I, I had it. I had it for a while. I uh, uh, had gotten. I, I had it for. I had it and all the expansions for a while, and then and then moved it along. Uh, unfortunately, uh, uh, Stonemeyer got a little um, a little too political in some of their uh, in in some of their posts, as did the designer Elizabeth Hargrave. So, uh, not not canceling. Just chose you know not to support support the game myself it just kind of left a bad taste in my mouth which is kind of unfortunate because it's come out on digital and it's understand the digital version is really good but uh, just on a personal note it's still a recommended game though it's it is definitely fun um let's see looking at the history um what do we got in fact we you know, see we still recommend it once upon a game recommends it it's not a bad game at all just one i didn't want to play anymore so let's see it's high uh, over time here in January 2019, it had 14 unique plays. Um, so that's pretty cool. Um, recently, the most recent time that uh, this top month was February of 2020 here, where it had nine. You can see that on the list. Um, top users, Doc Savage 2001, has recorded 10 months uh, with, with at least one play. So that's pretty cool. And here's a chart since it first appeared on the on the uh, SGOIT in January of 2019. It had 14 uniques, 22 actuals. Um, that's about its peak for actual plays. Actual plays is the actual plays that are logged. Uh, you also notice that uh, when you're looking at a base game, it includes the stats for the expansion. So here we have the Oceania expansion was what was logged, but it counts as the base game always. You would get people playing these LCGs and they would, uh, you know, want to post under the expansion back they're playing. And so it got to where uh, it was hard to track. Everything was like watered down. So uh, a few about a year or so ago, I coded it where um, plays for the expansion do count toward the base game as well. So it's pretty helpful for tracking data. Um, so yeah, so it looked like it had a high here of 17 actuals, one in January of 21. Um, September it had six and that's the most since October of, of 21 September of 22 it had six actual plays four uniques is the highest also since uh, four in October of 21 so it's kind of t it's kind of trended down in its popularity but uh, it made the top 10 once again this month for September So also it for unique plays in September, tying for seventh, is one called Voyages, and I have not heard of this one. This seems to be a uh, relatively new title in 2021. Uh, it appeared in December of 2021 and had nine uh, actual plays and seven unique plays. Uh, it's been on the chart most months, except for February 22. No one played it, and then it's picked up a little bit over time here. July and September, it had four uniques and four actuals. So we have four different people who have played it. You can see October's data is already starting to build up here as Prince of Parsnips has given it a play. Uh, top users, its top month was December 2021, as we noted, with seven uh, uniques. Uh, and the Crazy Scotsman is its top proponent here with six plays. Again, Doc Savage appears on this one. He seems to like many games. Uh, Arizonk, Prince of Parsnips, Gary Lloyd all played it in September, bringing it up. So let's see what this one's about here. It's a roll and write game, okay, of open sea adventure and exploration. Each player is the captain of a vessel sailing the seas and requires a single printed game sheet and pencil, while one player also needs to provide three dice. 
On a turn, three dice are rolled for all the players. Each player chooses one die for the direction they are sailing, another for how far they sail, and the final die for crew duties aboard their ship. Players score points for visiting different islands, gathering and selling goods for trade, and training their sailors in case they come across the mysterious dread. Go from 1 to 100 players. So this, this strikes me as a uh, free downloadable print and play game, possibly. Let's take a look here. Uh, no, it's by Postmark Games. And it's rolling right. So, cool. I had not heard of that one, so that's one to check out for sure. Next up in our eight way tie for seventh place is another one called Rove, Results Oriented and Versatile Explorer. It's from 2021. Again, another one I have not heard of. Let's see what this one's about. In the far reaches of space where humankind still dares not go, the sturdy Rove, short for Results Oriented Versatile Explorer, is often deployed. You are one such unit. Unfortunately, your navigation systems malfunctioned and you were forced to make a crash landing on a hostile alien planet. Armed only with your array of movement-enhancing modules, you'll have to roll, stretch, shimmy, and bounce your way to safety and complete the mission before your power supply runs out permanently. This is a solo-only game, so that's cool. Spatial puzzle. In each game of Rove, a player will face a series of mishaps that can only be solved by arranging these six module cards in a specific pattern. Moving a module requires movement points gained by discarding cards from hand for the listed amount. Players may gain additional points if their current module layout matches the pattern shown on the discarded card. Each module costs one movement point per activation and uses its own unique movement style, such as only moving diagonally or pushing other modules a single space. Modules also have powerful single-use abilities that can help players get out of a tight spot. So that's kind of cool. It sounds like it's uh, is it a downloadable. Let's see the game metadata here. No, this is by Button Shy. So they're the ones that create a lot of those little small card games like Sprawlopolis and others. So uh, I have to look into that one, see about picking that one up. Let's take a look at its history here. So you see on the chart, uh, July of oh, hide that there, July of 22, it had eight actuals and six uniques. That was its high point. And in September, it had six actuals and four uniques. Pretty cool. Looks like the Crazy Scotsman here is its number one proponent. And its top month, as we noted, was July of 2022. And no one has played it yet in October, so we'll see how it fares at the end of this month. Okay, so also in uh, seventh place, part of our, this is a massive log gem here at seventh place, we have Or Orchard. It's a nine card solitaire game. Now this one I've heard of before and I think I had it once in a trade and did not get a chance to play it. Uh, it's a quick solitaire tile laying game that plays in under 10 minutes. Won the 2018 nine card nano game print and play design contest. The aim of the game is to harvest fruit, scoring points by playing cards so that their fruit trees overlap other trees already in the orchard that bear the same fruit. The more trees you can overlap, the more fruit you'll pick. In addition to nine double sided cards, you need 15 dice of three colors keep track of your increasing harvest. Now this one had an awesome uh, history here. Look at this, it had a, in March of 20, it had 20 actual plays, 15 unique players for the month. So that was pretty cool. That was its, that was definitely its high. It's appeared 56 times on the SGOYT. Um, uh, people have written summaries on it 63 times and it's been rated as a solo game at a 3.99 out of 5. It has nine ratings. Let's take a look at those. So here we go. This The, the rating system allows gamers to put a tag in their description of their play, uh, giving it a, a, you know, a rating tag. And so I pick that up when I, when I scan the list and then save it, and I always save the latest one for that user. So. If you start out saying, hey, this is great, I love this, it's a 4.5, and then you change it later to be a 5.0, well, there you go. And it's flexible, you can rate it, uh, you know, any fraction, uh, you know, one through 10, between between zero and 5.0, but, you know, with a decimal between one and 10. So, uh, let's see, the highest rating here is by Alt Figaro, and he gives it a 4.5 in April of 2021. 
and I believe the newest rating is December of 2021 from Albia and she gave it a 4.1 so on average this is a 3.99 with nine different people rating it for solo play uh, Tucky 60 has played it 30 different times 30 different lists it's appeared on the 56 list months uh, each list is a month so the 56 months user tucky 60 has played it 30 months alvia has played it 21 and its top month again is when it was march of 20. so next on our list is marvel united it also had it's tied for seventh with four plays four unique plays this month uh, that is including uh, a couple plays of Marvel United X-Men Gold Team uh, by user Patton55. Um, now, the, again, this chart, as you see here, covers these 10 posted, posted expansions. Uh, it's appeared 26 months, and its high here was recently, uh, let's see, 19, 19, it's had 19 twice, most recently in June of 22. It had 19 actual plays but that was only five unique users playing the game um, whereas in april 21 it had 19 but it had seven unique users playing it its top month was seven in september of 2020 and april of 2021 it's about when it first came out it first appeared on the list in august of 20. so and then it had uh it's only had one zero since then and that was in december of 21 no one played it now this one I had before, and it was okay. I just I didn't I didn't care for the I didn't care for the gameplay of it. Also the the kind of car, you know really kitty cartoonish uh, artwork didn't kind of fit in my opinion with the um, with the Marvel universe. Uh, it, it looks like it's supposed to be a kids game, and it's you know it could be played by kids. Uh, I don't know if we track. Uh, it doesn't look like we have an age age range on the metadata, but. Uh, um, it just it, it comes across as a really kiddie game and uh, you know again could be played by younger uh, maybe older you know younger teens um, but anyway just the gameplay itself just didn't, didn't throw me all that much um, so I played it a couple times and then and then moved it along but uh, it's not a bad game if you you know if you like it it's just uh, wasn't wasn't my cup of tea so as a solo game, it's been rated twice as a 4.60. See who gives that. Moon Pie gives it a 5.0 as recently as January of 2022. Swizz, Swizzy gives it a 4.2 in September of 21. So that averages out to a 4.6. Love to hear your comments on any of these games that uh, that we're going over. Uh, you know, you definitely, definitely sound off in the uh, in the YouTube comments, or uh, you can uh, send us a message at uh, onceuponagame at gmail .com. Top user, Do Brazil, Do Brazil. It's fun. It's fun seeing some of these uh, usernames, people I remember from my past, but also uh, trying to pronounce them now. Usually, you just kind of say them in your head. You don't think about how it's actually pronounced. Some are easy. Gary Lloyd, Pat Fifty Five, but Do Brazil, Do 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 Brazil, Do Brazil. All I'll think about is the uh, Brazil movie by uh, I think Terry Gilliam from Monty Python fame. So, and this is listed as a family game, so I don't, I'm not sure what the youth, age, youngest age on it is here, but uh, it seems to be very popular. That's for sure. Been on 26 lists, appeared 26 months. Also, here is a in our in our tracking our. Seventh place traffic jam here is another one called Grove, which is also a nine card solitaire game. Um, I believe it's by the same designer of Orchard, possibly. Um, yeah, in fact, it's a sequel. Grove is the citrusy sequel to the award winning Orchard nine card solitaire game. It's 18 cards feature orange, lemon, and lime trees and a new wild card element, glades. These open spaces without trees combined with a new scoring mechanic offer more ways and opportunities to increase your harvest and create a greater variety of gameplay and strategies compared to Orchard. You'll also find a cheeky squirrel who can either help or hinder your fruit picking as well as a wheelbarrow, useful if you manage to get a little extra large haul. It really amazes me the, the gameplay that can be put into these 
uh, 18 card games, uh, you know, uh, just in, a, in such a small deck, such an edge. It reminds me of, of growing up playing computer games when um, there was a lot left to the imagination, even when they had graphics. I and mean, I'm not just talking about the Infocom adventures, but uh, even with graphics, it was like there was, a, there was a lot of imagination to everything you were you were doing and uh, uh, you know once once the multi CD games like Mist and stuff which they're great games don't get me wrong but it just seemed kind of like it, it just changed things we got some more spoiled on on big bigger 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 instead of quality and it's really cool how much how much fun can be put into this so let's see Grove came out or is first on the list in the 2021 games so it first appeared on our list in February two plays it's had a few zeros it's kind of slowed gone slowly and then something happened here in june or especially in july of this year we had 11 plays 10 unique users um and then in august it was 10 and 9. so there must have been a challenge in the forums maybe in the uh, in the guild uh grove playing challenge something happened uh to cause it to spike so it's had several zeros, but it's appeared on in 14 months since February of 21. Its top month was again July of 2022, and its top user is Mark Timmons 89, who's, who's reported at seven months. Uh, its rating is a solo game. It's got three ratings at a 4.27. Albia gives it a 4.3 in July of this year. Uh, Mark Timmons in this month gave it a 4.0. And Yathem CGZ gives it a 4.5, its highest rating. All right, so also in our um, eight-way tie for seventh is a highly recommended and veteran Friday. It's an 11-year-old game now. It's a solo, single-player-only game, SPO. Um, very, very popular. Very, very popular. In fact, when we look at uh, it's, it's, it's always in the top in terms of plays um, overall. It's, it's only been dethroned by a few other games, so that's pretty darn cool. So uh, it's already, in fact, it's already got two plays in October being tabulated. So it had four unique plays. Um, its biggest month was in June of 2015, where it had 20. And top user Redheaded Pharmacist has been playing this 51 months. It's been 113 months, and it has 51 from him, so that's pretty darn cool. Uh, it's got a 4.08 rating as a solitaire game by 10 users. Let's take a look at that. Most recent rating appears to be November of 21, where Halbox gave it a 4.0. Uh, the highest rating we have here is a 5.0 from Solonet in October of 2020. So you see here it's been on since May 13. It had one zero. It's only not been on a list one time in 114 months. There's only one month that it made, nobody played it, and that was January of 2014. So this is a, a constant favorite. It's always getting somebody playing. It's a nice small box game. As you can see, I recommend it highly. Um, it's one of uh, uh, Freedom Freeze's F titles, and uh, that's pretty darn cool. It's been on, been on the list many, 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 many times. I think it's even topped the list a few times. And finally, the last game on our list is one I have not played. It is Cartographers, a role player tale. It's a little too much. Uh, it's a little too much fantasy involved in this. It sounds like it sounds like it's a great game mechanic, but I, as everybody who knows me knows, I don't play uh, too many fantasy games. And this one uh, has a little bit of a little bit of that flavor. It's obviously a, it seems to be affiliated with role player, which is a different game, um, but. Uh, uh, I think there's also an app for this one too that I've seen. Um, but anyway, it has been on the list since July of 2019. 
and it has never not appeared in an SGOYT list. Everyone, it's always been played. It's had a few peaks here high, which may be from challenges, possibly, or it's just a uh, it's just a greenfield favorite by users. So its top actuals is 13 for actual plays, several to several months there, including back in January, uh, and its top for Uniques October, no, it looks like we had a 10 in January 2022. We had 10 unique plays. But again, it's never not been on the list. It has appeared on 30, for 39 straight months, it's been on at least one user's uh, table. So that's pretty cool. It has 10 ratings for a solo game. It averages a 4.11 out of five. Uh, there's Albie again, she gives it a 4.5. Tied for the highest here, we have uh, Moon Pie 13 gave it a 4.5 in January of 2022. The most recent rating by a user is DJ Ott 70 in February, who gave it a 4.2. Apparently, there's an ex there's several expansions here that are being counted as as plays as well, and it has had 240 actual plays logged. One of the summaries, uh, Cervantes says, bad luck made for a subpar gaming experience. And a relaxing puzzle of polynomial terrain placements that is an adventure each time. That's DJ Ott 70. And there's our friend, the crazy Scotsman. And he says, even a well done digital adaptation means you have to look at the screen and I miss the physicality of the real thing. So there we go, DJ Ott 70 is the top user with 23 months recording a play. All right, so now we have a three-way tie for fourth place. The first one on our list here is Three Sisters. I've not played this. I have, have seen about it. It's a roll and write from Matt Riddle and Ben Pinchback. Um, Seems like a very cool game. Uh, I have to try to pick up a copy of this. I, I almost picked one up and then did not, and I regret it. And so now I'm gonna have to see if I can't track one down. This one had five unique plays uh, for the month. Um, and since first appearing in February of 21, it's only been off the list once in November. And it's high was January of 22, it had seven, and April of 22, it had seven um, actual plays. And in January of 22, it had six unique plays. It's been on 19, 19 different months out of 20. Uh, let's see what else we got here. No one's rated as a solo game. And again, as noted, it's biggest month was January of 22. Zerdelita is the top user for this one with 16. Totally blowing, blown by everyone else. All Figaro, eight, eight Figaro, is second with five months played. Alita has played it sixteen months, so that is uh, that is definitely one I'm gonna have to check out. What are your thoughts on it? I've 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 only seen about it. I've not I've not actually played it. So um, there's a, apparently one expansion, the weather expansion. So also tied with fourth is the always, always, always popular Lord of the Rings, the card game. Um, this one has, actually I'm shocked. It's actually had a few months where it was not on the list. I thought this was gonna be one like Friday where it was always on the list. Um, uh, so I have had this quite a few times. The first time I got it, I really didn't like it. I thought it was dreadful. And then, I decided I was going to give it a, another fair shot. Got it, forced my way through it, and uh, not, not forced my way through it, but you know, forced forced myself through my uh, objections. Not objections. How's the best way to put it? Um, my difficulties, my ineptness <laughs> to play it, and so I forced my way through that, and and did manage to win. And I thought, yay! I finally won this game once. I mean, I only used the uh, someone had published, it's probably still available on the Gulag, it's um, a starter deck, a, excuse me, a deck that you can build just from the base game, from one base game. 
Here's a deck that supposedly can win every scenario up to a certain point. I don't know if any of the later scenarios are, you know, defeated or where, but you could possibly, if you know how what you're doing and, and draw the right cards, get through it. So only play with that because the worst thing about this game, the worst thing is the deck construction. The, the pre setup just to play a game to me is dreadful. Now I, I know you can play with certain pre-configured decks and things like that, but the, the deck construction is just anathema. It's just blah. So they, I've, I've called it the root canal of board gaming. So I know people like it, but for those of us that don't get to play very often, I just want to set up. I, I want to set up a game and play it. I don't want to set up a game and uh, you know, have to do this whole pre-game, you know, multi-step setup to get a deck to go through and play it. A scenario to lose to go wow now i need to tweak my deck i need one more gandalf and one less aragorn and then i'll do all right or you know one less mithril or something like that it's like oh just i just want to play just, just say here's this you can win you can lose and that's what i prefer i know other people like it and that's great if you like it enjoy it but it was not for me but anyway so i got through all that i played the game using that uh that, that, that pre-con deck and i won and i was so happy that i won and then it turned out I screwed up. I did something with my Gandalf card. I don't know if I had too many of them in there or I I did something wrong. And I found out weeks later and I was so crushed. I was like, you gotta be kidding me. You know, I finally played this and I did well and I got the right cards and I did the right things and I won and then I didn't. And I was just so, I think I'll use the word crestfallen. So anyway. Ah, but people still love it, and that's great. And this has 53 posted expansions because every you know, there's all these different uh, uh, scenario decks you can get. That includes the nightmare versions of decks and things like that. So people love this game, and I see why. It's great artwork. Now you may think that this has something you know my my not playing fantasy uh, would would be in conflict with this one and there is a difference between Lord of the Rings and regular fantasy and I just you know I'll leave it at that Tolkien was a Christian and Tolkien um, you know wrote things from a a good versus evil not good and evil are using all the same you know good and evil are all using the same magic and stuff like that he, he it was definitely in the, it was reflected in the movies very clearly and uh, so it's just it's not a conflict for me in this in this case because there's actually you know explanations and and no conflict, so. <sighs> Sorry about that. Um, so, looks like, um, obviously it's a, wow. Wow, I had 31 actual plays in October of 2014. That is pretty awesome. Uh, it's max, well, I think it was 17 in December of 14. Um, its highest, most recent highest is February of 20. It had 13, these are its top months. Uh, Redhead Pharmacist, there's our friend there. He's playing it. 37 months and Ben Bowes is played at 19 followed by the rest you see there on the list This one's always gonna be around this one. I'm, I'm surprised it's last Zero appearance. It's in fact in October. It's already got one Chechi Chech Chech uh, If I'm mispronouncing your handle, let me know um, Well, let's see that wasn't a zero that was a zero March 21 was the last time it was not on a list and it's only not been on a list two three four four different months once after the first time it was on a list in may 13 then in july it was not on the list so june it was on yeah so it's 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 always going to be on there we're always going to have lord of the rings card game i think uh there's a new version out now to uh reprint uh repackaging some thinner box i believe more streamlined. This also seems like the more expensive one I've seen. So there is that. Does it have ratings as a solo game? Let's see. People give it a 4.8. It's only got three ratings, but it's it's a 4.8 out of five as solo. Let's see who contributed to that. So the most recently was Mark Timmons. He's updated a lot of ratings in September. He gave it a 4.5. Doxa Logos gave it a 4.9, and Doc H has given it a 5.0. Back in February of 2020, I'm surprised there's not more uh, more ratings here. Seems like that would be a uh, a thing. So as popular as it is, it's 
So rounding out our three-way tie for fourth is Cascadia. Now this one, again, I have not played, but from what I read about it and, and seen, it's definitely one I would recommend. Um, kind of reminded me of Calico, which I did play, um, where you're trying to combine um, animals and, and habitats in a um, um, in the optimal way to, to score the most points. So that's a, that's a pretty cool um, pretty cool concept tile end game. It plays one to four. Um, so it looks like it's off the list here. I think these were prototypes that, that somebody was playing early on, which gave it a few early votes, but then it really kind of appeared as a 2021 game, and I think it really started appearing here as a June, and then once it kicked off in July of 2021, it has never not been on the chart. Its high was in September of 21, and it had 16 actuals and eight unique plays. And its high on unique plays was August of 21 at nine. Now this one, see this is weird. This one's only been out since 21, and it has five ratings as a solo game. And Lord of the Rings is been out for a million years, and has three, so. This one's got a 4.42, five ratings, Albia. Albia gives it a 4.5, and the most recent rating was in August of this year, Mark Devins. There he is, he gave it a 4.0. Uh, highest rating, Thurin, Thurain, Thurain, gives it a 5.0 back in September of last year. Scrolling down, Crazy Scotsman, there's our, there's our Crazy Scotsman again. He's got five uh, months playing this one. Eight Figaro, Mark Timmons 89, and Roderick Smith. I'm gonna go with that. Uh, uh, you know, I have four plays, so. That is pretty neat. It's appeared on, it's been, it's appeared on 19 lists overall. But again, I think, you know, those, those, those stragglers down there. In fact, let's just take a look at the early days of it. And it was, there were several different players. There must have been a, 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 if this was a Kickstarter, there may have been a print and play version that was made available to the backers until the game got released, but that's just a theory here. So that is the finish of our fourth place game. All right, now we go to second place. And there's a two-way tie for second, the first of which we'll cover is Sprawlopolis. This one came out in 2018. This is also by Button Shy. Uh, this one's been, been really popular. In fact, it has never, since August 18, has never not been on the list. It has appeared 50 times in 50 months, with not a zero in sight. So this is a city building uh, game, again with uh, 18 cards, I believe, that you um, uh, you know, lay out in certain arrangements. You draw the card and you have to lay it out in a certain, certain pattern. Uh, yeah, 18 cards, variable scoring system, games are same twice each turn. Players will play one card from their hand to the growing city, trying to score as many points as possible. Players will have to communicate and play. Well, when you're playing solo, you don't have to communicate with anybody, you just do it. So, uh, pretty awesome. It's been on 50 lists, 50 out of 50. It's never, so far since it's been out, it has not, not been on a list. And this one has 18 ratings as a solo game and a 4.03. Take a look at that data. There's our friend Albi again. These are in alphabetical order by username, by the way. Uh, in June 21, she gave it a 3.0. The highest rating, we've got several fives here. Uh, Hokey Geek, Jofers 2 gave it a five. Um, yeah, and the most recent is Got an August 22, looks like. Yes, Cervantes, when he's not Don Quixote, gives it a 4.0. 18 ratings average out to a 4.03 out of 5. Top users are tied between DJ Hot 70 and JY0831. It's 16 months played. And its top month, as we noted, was October of 2018. Building a sprawling aggro combo cityscape is just enough for a win, said Mark Demons 89 in August of 2022. Apparently there's several sequels, or not sequels, expansions. Combo, Comboopolis just came out in 21. Beaches, Construction Zones, Interstate, Points of Interest, and Rectar. 
Nice filler fitting any day schedule by Cervantes. And that is Sprawlopolis. Also tied for second place with six unique plays is The Game. Um, this is this is a fun game. I've played this on my iPad, um, where you've got 98 cards and you're discarding them into four four piles, two of which count increment up and two of which increment down. So you have to play a card on the up piles that's higher in value than the previous card, and on the down piles uh, that's lower in value. So you basically is you draw the cards, you have the cards in your hand, and you play out. <coughs> you have to play two cards, I think two cards a turn as you know two uh, stacks and you want to get them as close to the number that you have as possible because eventually you're going to run out of cards so having you know the ups and the downs you got you have four chances for each card but you don't want to leave too big of a gap or you're going to end up never being able to get rid of all your cards and determine whether you win or lose so this one is a lot of ups and downs but apparently it looks like its biggest month was in september is that right yeah it's seven uh, actual plays, six unique plays. So that's that's the biggest it's ever had, either uniques or actuals. So um, that was record-setting month for it here. Um, Cassie B said everyone's playing the game. Uh, she also said one to one hundred. Do I have the cards I need? One hundred to one. <laughs> Cassie B is going to be number one. Yeah, she's she and Smitty Ohio have played it nine different months. It's not been rated as a solo game yet, but it has appeared 56 different months since it came out, but it does have several where it doesn't get picked up. So it's like people grab it, play it, and then, you know, it gets forgotten about for a month or two, and then somebody says, oh, I'm gonna pull that out for a quick filler game. Looks like its biggest gap <clears throat> off the list was from November of 2019 to July of 2020. It had a, it had a dry spell there. Nobody wanted to play that as the, uh, the Rona was starting, it looked like. At the end of 20 and then finally they start playing it again so that's cool all right so that is second place the game spiel so long du kannst and now we're going on to the number one game for september of 2022 it had nine unique plays it has been of the past 12 months it is it has been the top game one two three four five six seven times in the last 12 months it has been the top game it has appeared on the top 10 list one two three four five six seven eight. Oh, excuse me i take it back it was tied on one month so it was actually uh top game eight out of the last 12 months and it has appeared in the top 10 11 out of the last 12 months only in february 2022 did it now make the list and that game of course is marvel champions the card game it just came out in 2019 and it has appeared 37 months out of 37 months. It has no months where it did not appear on a list. It's been played at least once every month since, it's, since it first appeared in October of 2019. And that of course includes all the expansions and, and each character expansion is, is its own expansion. So you can get all, you know, all these different heroes, a single uh, small box expansions. You can get some uh, there's some small uh, enemy expansions and some medium-sized box enemy expansions. Of course, those are all counted here as well. In fact, it already has five five uniques for uh, not five uniques, five plays for the month of October, and the month has just started. So it's it's bound to be top of the list again. People love this game apparently. Um, it is a LCG. I have this. I just recently picked this up in a trade. Uh, I had played it uh, a couple times with the base game, 3D printed some inserts, did all kinds of things with it, and it was okay. It was it was definitely to me superior to uh, the Marvel United. Um, 
but ultimately it's still quasi a deck construction game. It's um, it's kind of like um, like Star Wars uh, LCCG, where when you build your decks, you're kind of building these. You're combining some preset decks, so it's not a lot less you know uh, nuanced, I think. But uh, you st you know you're still in the uh, you're still in the uh, pregame construction kind of thing, which I believe though that with champions there are uh, some online resources to help you uh, set up a deck. So that's good because I don't want to think about it. I just want to play a game. I just want to get out of game and play it. And with this one, you definitely have starter decks you can just play. But then if you want to tweak it and get into all that and have more success, then, then you've got to get into that whole pregame show route. So, But it is the number one game this month, and looking like it may be the number one game in October again, if enough people play it. It has been rated seven times, has a 4.41 out of five as a solo game. Let's take a look at that. Albia, she's there again, 4.0. Top rating is a 5.0 by Toxalogos. And the most recent rating is on August of 2022 when Mark Timmons re-rated it as a 4.5. So there you go. Look at that. Top user is Doxalogos, and he would know he's played at 35 different I assume it's him, I'm sorry, Doxalogos could be male or female. Uh, 35. That user has played it 35 times. 35 months. Uh, Mark Timmons second with 30, and then followed by the rest of the list you see there. But a lot of users have played this. Its top month was November of 2019 with 27 uh, unique plays. Albia has said, Marvel Champions card game features all sorts of fun around building a deck and understanding it, while some villains can be a little tiresome. So she obviously enjoys the deck construction phase. Now deck building is a different thing. So deck building is great. Dominion, things like that, that that's, a, that's a fun game. So that's a fun concept as part of the game. But this is, you know, deck construction. So Mark Timmons, I play Marvel Champions. Surprise, surprise. Yep, 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 yep. Because he's way up there on the list. Um, not much more to say about this one. This is just way up there and expected to be up there for quite a while. So taking a look at the overall leaderboards that we've got, uh, the SJYT has slacked off quite a bit, I will say. The top 20 uh, unique uh, geek list, or uh, top 20 uh, unique entries. Um, the most recent in the top 20 appears to be January of 2021. January is always a busy month. Uh, it seems like everybody gets their games for Christmas. Uh, they started, you know, they got, you know, it's winter, they're stuck inside, they're playing a lot more solo. It seems like traditionally January was always a spike from, from December and from uh, February. January was always, were big months. Of the top 20, we've got one, two, three, four, <coughs> four Januarys in the top 20. So that's one fifth January. Um, but it, but uh, participation in the SGYT has, has tapered off quite a bit of late. Go take a look at the January of the September list. So for example, in September, there were, overall, there were 565 unique entries, 722 actual entries, um, 65 users posted a summary on theirs, and there were 416 different games played of those 565 uniques, 416 different games. And there were 130 users who took part, 11 of whom was their first time ever posting on the list. So that's that's a pretty good month. 8.46% um, were new users. There you see the top games of the month again, once again, the top 10. Uh, top user for the month was Erzonk, who had 57 uh, games posted. 57 different games posted. Wow, that's playing a lot of games. Um, let's take a look at his stats here. He's already played quite a bit for October. September 2022. Look at all these games he played. They're in reverse order of the month. But 
He is quite a prolific game player. So he first appeared in March of 18 with five games, and then he, had, he was off the list for a long time. And then in August or July of 2019, he just picked it up and boom, he's gone to the races. So he's already got 13 this month. So you'll see though, the uh, unique entries at 565 compared to 565 compared to the previous records, 792 is the lowest of the top 20. So it's gonna take a while before somebody gets on the list. Now September has not made the top 20 at all ever. So September may be a slow month, but uh, it still seems like participation is, is backing down. Our top 10 actuals, uh, so the record holder is still 1,442 again in January of 2017. We had 1,442 games logged. That is pretty, pretty amazing. Uh, top 10 number of games played, different, different games played. <clears throat> December of 2020 had 594 different games. That's still, still a record that holds on. Nothing in 2022. Top 10 number of users we had in January, we had 308 different users taking part in the list. And the top month of new users was also January 2017. That, that month is just like never going to get beat. 61 new users took part. So seeing what's hot in the last 60 days, these are, these are games that have been played um, based on their unique plays over the last 60 days. And this is, this, you can always check this daily. Uh, this changes each day. So it's, it takes games played from the current day back 60 days and uh, takes the unique plays. So, uh, Marvel Champions is right up there on the top still. It's just very hot and when it's in bold it means it was there a year ago. So you take today's date a year ago and then go for, look at the 60 days from there. And Marvel Champions was number one last year at this time as well. So it has just remained constantly popular. I think people like it more than Lord of the Rings card game, although Lord of the Rings card game has nine in the last 20 <clears throat> excuse me, in the last 60 days, but it was second place last year. Cascadia has been hot both months, uh, or both, both, uh, both periods. And you see the rest of the list here. And that was last year. So the most users have posted Friday, as I mentioned. So we've had 310 different users who have posted at least one play of Friday. 242 for Lord of the Rings card game, tied with Manged Knight, the inferior Star Trek Frontiers predecessor. Uh, Hostage Negotiator is creeping up. <coughs> Space Hulk Death Angel, the card game, which they should really just call Space Hulk Death Die, the card game. Terraforming Mars is creeping up. That's gonna that's gonna pull ahead because that one's still it's new, but it's probably one of the newer ones on this list. I mean, newer ones at the top of this list, I should say. It's already passed Robinson Crusoe. Um, Race for the Galaxy, uh, it's still hanging in there. All time top 50. So that's the most users posting a game. This is the all time unique plays. Friday, top of the heap, 718, Lord of the Ring card. Lord of the Rings card game, 701. They're both constantly appearing on the list. Terraforming Mars has already taken third place on this list. So that is pretty, uh, pretty awesome. Hostage Negotiator was a big hit for a while. I'm not sure it's being played quite as much lately. Let's take a look. Let's see, you know, it's kind of tapered off here since May of 2019. Now, one thing this won't include is a lot of people switched. I mean, some people are still playing it. Uh, it was on the list in September of 2022, but uh, a lot of people um, are playing, I think, the uh, Crime Wave version as well as they've moved on to Final Girl and some others from uh, from uh, Van Riker games. And that's a, quite a long list, so let's take one more before we wrap up for this episode and we will be back next month with more. We will look at the leaders for 2022 and this is the top games based on all the list through September or through today of 2022. So clearly the top game of 2022 is gonna be Marvel Champions barring any kind of change. It's got 79 unique plays in 
just the first, you know, nine point, you know, whatever months we're in. Uh, oh, wow, it's it's the eighth now, so <laughs> 9.25 months. But it's at 79. Lord of the Rings card game is at 43. That's the next closest. <coughs> Top user for the year is Airzonk, and he's blown that away. Alita is second place at 280. Uh, Airzonk has 523, she has 280. And she's blown away Cassie B, who's at 196. So that is, that is pretty amazing. You guys are playing a lot of solo games. So in 2022 so far, we've had 5,016 unique entries, 6,232 actual entries, 1,699 different games have been logged. 1,699 games. 382 users have taken part. So that is... Uh, some pretty cool stuff here. So, I thank you again for joining me on this recap of the top 10 games being played solitaire um, as tabulated by the SGOYT and the Geeklist aggregator. Um, I invite you again to comment on what you think of these games and what are your favorite games um, and what you're what you're playing. If you're not a participant and you and you have not been uh, oppressed on Board Game Gulag and still have an account, I invite you to join the One Player Guild. Uh, some really good people over there and, uh, and uh, take part in the SGOYT, posting your plays. It's good good fun, not a lot of work, just uh, just share what you're playing. Just just add, add it to the geek list. There's a subscription to get notified when each month's list comes out, usually around the last of the previous month, and uh, then you can start posting uh, posting what you play, share your thoughts, get others' feedback, and uh, you might find some new games on your own. So again, I appreciate you watching this. Thank you so much. God bless you. Bye-bye. Oh!